Hello and welcome to Protractor Paintings, inspired by Frank Stella. In today's video, we're continuing our work on Frank Stella, remembering that last week we looked at Concentric Squares by Frank Stella, and we tried to see what we could learn about leaving space in between shapes on our composition. We're going to use a special tool today called a protractor, and it's responsible for this D shape that you see again and again in this composition. We'll also use rulers today, and we're going to use the double line, which is something we learned about in the last activity, where we take our shapes and give them double lines so we can leave space between them. We'll also be using watercolor paper in today's painting, as well as pencil, your ruler and protractor, and a white crayon. For our paint, we're going to be using watercolors, a brush, a paper towel, and a cup of water. So go ahead, pause the video, collect your materials, and meet me back here when you're ready. Hope you got all your stuff. So I'm starting by tracing my protractor onto my paper and making a design with that and my ruler. And I'm just trying to fill up my picture with beautiful shapes. See, I tried to freehand one here, and it's not quite right. It's not going to match up with my other one, so I might get rid of that later or change it to make it look better. But I'm just trying to fill up my space first in a way that I think looks interesting using these tools to make some nice lines and shapes. This feels pretty satisfying. Getting a nice clean edge on some of these shapes. There we go. Some of them might overlap or interlock with each other. Try to make it look interesting. So in the end, I ended up with something like this. Those are all single line shapes. But now I'm going to come in and add the double line. So inside my shapes or outside some of my shapes, I'm going to try to create this double line where there's going to be empty space when I add my color to my shapes. Uh, and since we're using watercolor paint, we're going to block off that double line space with white crayon. First, I want to mark in where I want those double lines to be on my shapes. This might take you some time, but it will help in the long run. It is probably the most difficult part of learning from Frank Stella's style. This double line is tricky. All right, so now that I'm done with that, I'm going to get my white crayon. I'm going to mark those spaces in between my shapes with the wax from the crayon, and that will resist the paint. So I'm going to erase a line, mark over it with my crayon, and then go on to the next line. I erase the line and trace it with my white crayon until I have done all the lines in my picture. Erase and trace. And you can still kind of see the line after you erase it. And then of course, when you trace over it with your white crayon, it's a little hard to see, but it is possible to see where you have drawn it. So just pay attention to what you're doing. Try to just do one line at a time. Don't do too many lines at once. You might get confused. There we go. Erase the line and trace it. Erase and trace. So when we paint over this, the paint will not stick to any of those areas that we have marked with the white crayon. Those areas will stay white, and that is called wax resist because we're using watercolor. It doesn't like to stick wherever there is wax on the paper. All right, so now that I've done that, I'm ready to paint. I've got all my lines marked in with white crayon, so I'm going to set up my workstation. This is a good way to set it up if you're right-handed with your paint at the top your water on the right, and your brush and your paper towel on the right, and your artwork on the left. 
But if you're left-handed, you'll probably do it the other way. This is the way I do it with my brush, water, and paper towel on the left side. So here I am. I'm going to get my lightest color going first. That's yellow. Get a little water in the brush and then lift up some color from my paint tray and put it down on the page. And you'll notice the white crayon is actually keeping it from spreading, spreading too far. Now when I'm ready to change colors, I want to just dab my brush on my paper towel, check it, and then I will spread the uh, brush on the bottom of the cup, kind of swirling it on the bottom of the cup like I'm trying to paint the bottom of the cup. When I check my brush, it has still got a little bit of paint in there, so I will swirl it around again. We don't want to smash the brush, just swirl it around, swipe it on the edge, and then check it to make sure it is clean before you stick your brush into a new color because we don't want to mix our colors too much. We want to keep them nice and clean. All right, so I'm going to move on to the, my next darkest color now, which is green. Just don't forget to rinse your brush between changing colors. There we go. I'm going to move on to my next darker color. I'll speed this up a little bit so you guys don't have to watch me all day long. You get the idea. And you can see right there the wax is resisting the blue where I am painting over it. And then in the end, I hope you end up with something that you like. Don't forget to rinse out your brush before you put it away. Make sure it has time to dry just a little bit without being pressed on its bristles. Don't leave your brush in the cup. Then when you're ready, put it back in your paint tray and close it. You should hear a nice little snap here. It lets you know it's closed. All right, so there you go. I hope you are enjoyed this activity and that you ended up with something that you're proud of. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.